in order to be able to do the last two correctly, the students need to visualize that they are not equal parts. So some children have difficulty, some of them can. For example, for this one, they incorrectly say it's one third, isn't it? Because they think it's one out of three. But they do not understand that these are not equal parts. So I ask them, this and that, are they really the same size? So they are not sure. However, if they were able to visualize, then their mind can see the lines I'm drawing in now. If they can visualize, they can see that this triangle is made up of two triangles and this other piece is made up of three. So they are not equal parts. But this student, they seem to think that they are equal parts and hence they make the mistakes you see here. So when the children do not have enough concrete experiences in the earlier years, you might see this happening uh, in the fourth grade. So it is not uncommon to see this one third. It's a common mistake when we did the lesson yesterday. There are no problem with the half. So this is what we mean by the model method. What is a concrete representation of it? Some teachers may want to cut this out like you say, on cardboard pieces and move them around. That's perfectly all right. If you are using interactive whiteboard, you can actually move this around as well on an interactive whiteboard. The second point about the program you use is communication. The program is designed for the children to communicate initially by talking and later writing. And that is why during the lesson, we want them to communicate as much as possible. They must be talking, they must be explaining to each other and later to the whole class self. <laughs> that is why I give them only one set and they have to argue. Sometimes they don't agree. And then they talk among themselves. And as a teacher, I do not interfere. I let them sort it out. Later, at the end, I do a whole class discussion and we discuss a little bit about what the answer might be. And it's a very simple activity. Don't need read much material. I just make some copies of this and just cut them out. Cost next to nothing. I think some of the uh, materials in a teacher's book allow you to make copies and do similar things. So you can see again and again without fail. They have no difficulty with the half they have no difficulty with a one six, but they have difficulties with a one third and two thirds. It was common. I think three quarters of the class of 40 children have this difficulty. About one quarter of them were able to see that they are not equal. It was interesting that although some students were able to say this is one third, they were not so clear why it is wanted. Some of them incorrectly say it's wanted because it's one out of three. I use this example to point out as a teacher, if we are not careful, sometimes we get the wrong information. In this case, it's really wanted because of the way I draw it. What I did was, the square I had, I cut it into three equal parts. Okay, that's the first step. And then, I have this upper portion. So that's clearly one third one. That is one third. And these two other portion, I divide them equally into two parts. So each of these, although they don't look the same, they are equal parts. They don't look the same, but they are equal parts because the area is the same. Three units, one, two, three units. One, two, three units. So they are equal parts. 
So children who can see their ego parts are actually very high level. But because of the way it is done here, a child that has a wrong concept will also get the right answer. So in a way, this is not a good task. Okay? So I just want to use this example to explain careful use, careful selection of tasks. Um, <clears throat> if I was one of the gifted students in your class, I would say, Mr. So that is why the starting of the lesson was very important. The starting of the lesson, the idea I give them is equal parts means equal size. I didn't say same shape. So as a teacher, I must remember not to make the first mistake. And of course, in the first few diagrams you have in the book, they are identical shape. It will start like that, for obvious reasons. It's easy to understand. So if a teacher has made a mistake, if the teacher said, these are equal parts because they are the same shape. You have planted a big misconception right from the beginning. That is why as teachers, we must look at the textbooks very carefully. If the textbook doesn't say the same shape, then we will wonder, hey, but why? And we should talk to each other. I, I thought it should be the same shape. And some of us may know, say, no, it's not the same shape. It should be the same area. It should be the same size. It's not the same shape. So once we are conscious about it, when we speak to the girls, we are more careful and we will not say same shape, ever, when we talk about equal parts. So if we have not said that in the beginning, and I didn't say that in yesterday's lesson, I say equal parts means same size, right? So I keep on emphasizing same size. When it comes to here, the argument will then be, why are they the same size? So in this case, it's the same size because this is made out of three squares. And this is also made up of 1, 2, and these two combined to form 1. Ability to see this requires visualization, to move this up and join them together. So for example, this one, can you imagine this can be cut into 8 equal parts? All triangles, as I've done that. So actually this is 1, 2, 3 out of 8. This is 3 8s rather than one third. Require visualization. The textbook or the workbook you use, the exercises are of this nature. They are not all identical. When you look at this exercise, you think it's all the same thing. It's not. Some of them do not require visualization. Some of them, the two thirds are split up. Some of them requires visualization. By looking at what the girls did in the workbook, you can understand what they, they know and what they do not know. And from there, you can plan good remedial strategies. Why they could do this, and why they couldn't do this, is it's, it's the same diagram. Except this one doesn't have the lines inside. That means they need to visualize. Clearly, these children couldn't visualize. They understood the concept and they got all this correct, but they couldn't visualize and they get this one wrong. And I use this opportunity to revise the main concept of concrete, pictorial, abstract, as well as to revise the concept of carefully selecting the question for the children to do and what information we can get by looking at what the children do. When you grade your student's workbook, there are so much information you can get to help you plan the next step.